there are four brand new coaches coming in to the ACC. How do they stack up against each other? And can any of them come near the top with Dabo Swinney, the king of the conference? We're here to answer that question and more, guys, where today at the Gridiron Expert, we are going to rank all 14 of the ACC head coaches going in to this 2022 college football season. And we're just going to go ahead and jump right on into our rankings, guys. Coming in at number 14 in the ACC, we've got Mike Elko, the new head coach at Duke. So Elko is one of those brand new head coaches we were talking about. And I will say it was time for Duke to move on from David Cutcliffe. Uh, a legendary head coach, the quarterback whisperer for many, uh, but I'm not so sure that Mike Elko is the right answer for Duke. He did have two top 20 defenses during his time as defensive coordinator at Texas A&M, each of those coming in the last two seasons. He spent four years down in College Station, but in 13 years as a defensive coordinator, he only had four top 25 defenses. I mean, some would say that's great. For me, that's not a great mark. Elko is relatively young, finally getting his break at a Power 5 conference, hopefully fixing this defense at Duke that was absolutely horrendous. But for a guy that has no prior head coaching experience and somewhat of a sketchy track record, we're going to put him at last in the conference. Coming in at number 13, Jeff Collins at Georgia Tech. He is not a new head coach, but Georgia Tech might be on the market for one if Collins can't deliver in 22. Georgia Tech, we knew we were going to be in the midst of a rebuild, switching from that triple option to that more pro-style attack. But... Jeff Collins is just 9-25 and 25 in three years with the Yellow Jackets. He's 24-35 and 35 overall as a head coach, and he will be gone at the end of 2022 if he does not get Georgia Tech to a bowl game. Many say he's kind of standoffish, both with the media and with other coaches and players. He's not a great recruiter. He went 3-9 in 2021. He's won just three games every year during his time in Atlanta, and if he pulls that again, he will be gone. Coming, coming in at number 12, Brent Pry at Virginia Tech. Brand new head coach with the Hokies. And one of those four that we talked about. Pry was the Penn State defensive coordinator from 2016 to 2021. And had top 25 defenses in Happy Valley in four of his five years with the Nittany Lions. Only year that he didn't was 2020, that wild COVID year. He's going to bring a physical style to Virginia Tech, a defense that was pretty bad last year in 2021. A physical style, a disciplined style, but we know that he's in the midst of a major rebuild in Blacksburg. Tons of questions on both sides of the ball. Really, the million-dollar question is, can Brent Pry fix it? We're not basing really these rankings on what they ha can do. It's what they've done in the past, and that's why he comes in at number 12 to go along with his no years and no experience as a head coach. Coming in at number 11, Another new head coach, Tony Elliott at Virginia. First time head coach at Virginia. He served as the offensive coordinator at Clemson uh, from 2015 to 2021. Has been with the Clemson Tigers since 2011. Well, this was a home run hire for me by Virginia. Elliott, that's a great recruiter, a great offensive mind. He's going to work alongside one of the better quarterbacks in the country now in Brennan Armstrong. He helped lead Clemson to seven ACC titles, helped make, uh, lead them to four national championships, won two of those national championships. Elliott, really to me, was the perfect fit for the Cavaliers. He comes in at number 11 in our coaching rankings. Coming in at number 10, Dino Babers at Syracuse. Some would say he deserves to be lower on this list, maybe somewhere around 12th on the list. But he does have some head coaching experience and did have that one solid year at Syracuse and nearly got them to a bowl game in 2021. 2022, though, might be his last year. Babers led the Orange to a 10-3 season in 2018, but they've won just 11 games in the last three years. He's 29-43 and 43 overall with the Orange, just one bowl game during his time. If he fails to get to a bowl game in 2022, he will be gone as head coach of Syracuse. In at number nine, Mike Norvell at Florida State. Norvell went 38-15 and 15 in four years at Memphis, including a 12-1 and 1 mark in 2019. But during his two years at Florida State, Norvell is just 8-13, and 13, including a 5-7 and 7 mark last year. By Florida State standards, that is unacceptable. And a 6-6, six and six, even 7-5 and five record in 2022, while that would get Florida State to a bowl game, would be considered a failure and unacceptable by many of the fans. Norvell has to quickly turn things around if he wants to remain down in Tallahassee. I believe he is way better than all the other coaches we have mentioned already, but not enough to be considered to be in the upper half of ACC coaches. Coming in at number eight, 
Scott Satterfield at Louisville. You know, I think Scott Satterfield bought himself a little bit of time at Louisville by going bowling in 2021. If the Cardinals had failed to reach spell eligibility, Louisville might have a brand new head coach, and we might have five new coaches in the ACC this year. Satterfield is 18-19 and 19 in three years with the Cardinals. He returned to star quarterback and Malik Cunningham in 2022 when he has to be able to utilize that talent. Louisville needs seven to eight wins to maybe save his job. Great offensive mind, sometimes questionable decision-making, sometimes questionable defenses, sometimes questionable recruiting. Scott Satterfield has a lot to work on, but we, he does somehow find himself right outside of the upper half of ACC coaches. In at number seven, what begins the top half of ACC coaches? Jeff Halfley at Boston College. He is 12-11 and 11 in two years with the Eagles. And I would say that the two years that Halfley has had with Boston College, they feel way different than anything that Steve Adazio produced. Remember, that Boston College never exceeded seven wins under Steve Adazio. And Jeff Halfley, in his two years, has had six wins each time. Phil Jerkovec, if he doesn't get hurt last year, I think Boston College exceeds that seven-win mark. And I think they definitely can do it in 2022. Halfley's a young, great defensive-minded coach. He's recruiting extremely well. And I believe Boston College, well, they might not be in the elitist group of the ACC, but they might not be contending for, for, for titles or eight or nine win seasons, really nine or ten win seasons. I believe he's going to make them relevant. He's going to make them uh, contending. And it's about every game that they play, and they will exceed that seven-win mark, maybe as soon as 2022. In at number six, Dave Doran at NC State. Many think he should be higher on this list. And I battled. I almost put him up at number five, but I couldn't have the guts to do it. Dave Doran at 64 and 49 and nine years with the Wolfpack. He has three nine-win seasons at NC State, including a nine and three season in 2021. 2022 is shaping up to be his best year yet. But we have heard that time and time again at NC State. This is Dave Doran's best squad yet. They are loaded with talent. And typically, they fall short of those expectations. He cannot afford to do that last year. The fact that NC State has fallen short of sky-high expectations under Doran in a couple of years during his time there is why he finds himself at six and not any higher than that. And at number five, Pat Narduzzi. Some would say he deserves to be six. The one thing that separates Pat Narduzzi and Dave Doran is the fact that Narduzzi has an ACC title to his name. Narduzzi is 53 and 37 during his time with Pittsburgh, seven years with that program. He has made two ACC championship appearances, and of course last year won his first ACC title, uh, getting that win over Wake Forest and finishing the year at 11 and three with a loss in the Peach Bowl. Pittsburgh, once again, is up there as a coastal favorite. They have the new addition of Keaton Slovis at quarterback to replace Kenny Pickett. Jordan Addison, unfortunately, is gone, so that's a huge blow to this program, but hopefully Keaton Slovis can pick up right where the offense left off. Pittsburgh is a contender in the coastal. They are, when you look at the schedule, a team that could win another 10 or 11 games in 2022, and Pat Narduzzi is going to be a major reason why they can achieve that. And number four, Matt Brown. If you look at the stats just recent years, you would say Mac Brown doesn't deserve to be fourth. But we're looking at the entire body of work here, guys. And Mac Brown is a legendary coach. A very historic career. 265, 139, and 1. That is his overall record. He has a national title to his name, winning the 2005 National Championship at Texas. He had 12 double-digit win seasons and over the course of his career. And while he might just be 21 and 17 in his three years at North Carolina, including a disappointing six and seven season in 2021, North Carolina had a major bounce back year, or really met bounce back last few years under Mac Brown. Just like he made North Carolina relevant back in the 90s, 1988 to 1997, he served as the head coach of the Tar Heels. He has done it again over these last three years, taking over a rough program that Larry Fedora left and rebuilding them from the ground up. So again, a disappointing 2021. Expect North Carolina to bounce back, not in a big way, but enough in 2022, because as long as they have Mac Brown on their sideline, they are capable of anything. We're now into the top three of our ACC coaches, guys. Coming in at number three, we have Dave Clawson at Wake Forest. He is one of the more underrated coaches, not just in the ACC, but for me and the entire country. And it's because of what he has done at a program that has struggled for so long. Dave Doran is just 51 and 48 in eight years with the Demon Deacons. But he has led Wake Forest to six straight bowl games. He is four and two 
in those bowl games. That is the longest bowl streak in program history. The Demon Deacons went 11-3 in 2021, their first double-digit win season since 2006. And with a loaded offense, Sam Hartman returning at quarterback, this is a team that could once again contend for an ACC Atlantic title. Like we said time and time again, it's Clemson, NC State, and Wake Forest. And the reason Wake Forest is in contention is because of Dave Clawson. We're now into our top two. You realize we've only talked about three brand new head coaches in the ACC. That's because the fourth comes in at number two. Mario Cristobal now at Miami. This was a huge, big name hire for the Hurricanes. A guy who's going to bring some disciplined football and a disciplined style of ball to Miami. A guy who is a great recruiter returning to his alma mater. And a guy who succeeded significantly, extremely well during his time at Oregon. Crystal Ball went 35-12 and 12 in four seasons with the Ducks, won two Pac-12 titles and a Rose Bowl in 2019. Actually led the Ducks also to three Pac-12 championship games. Consistently had them in discussion for the college football playoff, but typically faltered short right at the end of the season. But this big name hire, his ability to recruit, and obviously his track record of success at another Power 5 conference makes me believe that he is not just one of the best coaches in the ACC, but up there as a top 20 or 25 coach in the country and can make Miami a contender within this conference. And finally, guys, number one, the number one coach in the ACC, it should be no surprise, it is Dabo Swinney at Clemson. He is 146 and 33 in 13 full seasons with the Tigers. During that time, he has won seven ACC championships. He has made six college football playoff appearances. He has made four national championships. He has won two of those four national championships, both of those coming over Alabama and Nick Saban. Dabo Swinney is one of the best coaches in the country. Many have him ranked as the second best head coach in the country, only behind Nick Saban at Alabama. Let's keep this in mind too, guys. Dabo Swinney, he has been there for 13 full years. Clemson. They have not had less than 10 wins since 2010. They've had at least 10 wins every single year since 2010. That was his second full year with the Tigers. That shows you how good Davis Winnie is. That shows you the dynasty that he has built at Clemson. And while many consider last year to be a disappointment because it only went 10-3, and three, Clemson will be back, and they will be back in a big way in 2022. So guys, there you have it, our ACC coaching rankings heading into this upcoming season. 1 through 14, we want to hear from you. Where would you rank these four brand new ACC coaches? Where do you rank them among each other? Where do you rank them among all the other current coaches within the conference? We want to hear your rankings so we can debate and discuss down in the comments below. But until then, guys, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Make sure to check out everything down in the description below. And once again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.